class of 2020, greetings and congratulations on achieving one of the most important milestones of your lifetime. Before I begin, I would like to thank you, the class of 2020, for asking me to leave you with some words of wisdom. Although it is questionable whether I have attained the level of wisdom that can compare to that of most of my colleagues at this fine institution, but I will try my best. When this semester began, we obviously did not anticipate it ending this way. With millions of Amer Americans locked down, uh, trying to prevent the spread of a mysterious and deadly disease. Let's take stock of how this has affected all of us here in the Millsaps community. We are spread across the globe instead of together in Jackson for commencement. We're challenged to continue learning while reinforcing the Millsaps doctrine of ad excellentium. We face a global debate over whether the government can compel people to remain away from work, school, and church, and for how long. Hundreds upon thousands of Americans and millions of people around the world may succumb to a virus that has caused us to reshuffle, reorganize, and reprioritize every facet of our daily lives, our professional lives, and for you, your academic careers. Yet here we are. I'm coming to you from room 268 in Sullivan Harrell Hall. Although I could have chosen any venue on or off campus to deliver these remarks, I chose this one because it reminded me of you. For anyone who has been in one of my classes, there's a very good chance that it was in this room where you got to see me fumble with the technology, inevitably call upon people like Fletcher Freeman, Beth Dowdy, or anyone at IT to come rescue me. You've seen me draw sickly looking diagrams, tables, and graphs on this board behind me and pace around the front of this room to the point of wearing out the carpet. So I thought we would get together in Sullivan Herald 268 one more time. When our disrupted second half of the semester began, I sent an email to all of those who were enrolled in my classes this semester containing what some sources believe to be an ancient Chinese proverb that others attribute to an old English maxim. The source, however, is less important at the moment than the purpose, and it goes something like this. May you live in interesting times. May you live in an interesting age. And may you live in exciting times. Well, class of 2020, like it or not, we've achieved at least some of these objectives in the second half of this term alone. Let me be perfectly clear. You are not the first generation of college students to face obstacles that disrupt what you may have planned or expected for a semester of college. There's a plaque which hangs at the Northwest Street entrance to the beautifully renovated Christian Center. Maybe you've noticed it, maybe you've not, and maybe you will the next time you're here. It bears the names of the Millsaps College students who gave the ultimate sacrifice for the preservation of human freedom in the struggle against the Axis powers during the Second World War, as well as those who offer to do the same yet we're fortunate to return home to us. This plaque is testament to the idea of an interrupted college experience and serves as a reminder of the Millsaps majors of the greatest generation who rose to the challenge and faced them head on. Every time I walk into that building, I stop and look at that plaque and quietly say, thank you. And I hope whenever you return to campus to finally uh, say your goodbyes to us, that you will do the same. Putting that aside, you have been tested and challenged in a different way, as each generation is. Rather than ancient proverbs, perhaps the words of President Ronald Wilson Reagan are the ones that are most appropriate for you in our present moment. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted, it belongs to the brave. Bravery in the sense that you met this challenge instead of shrinking from it that instead of surrendering in the face of the unexpected or the difficult, you adapted, we adapted, and here we are. Rather than allowing our situation to define you, you instead sought a path forward with bravery, with the help of your families, your friends, your professors, administrators, and the incredible staff and team here at this institution, your institution. Aristotle observed that we become brave by doing brave acts. And this is what we see all around the world today in response to this pandemic. Many of you may soon find yourselves in professions that place you on the front lines. 
and in harm's way. Others may find yourselves spending the coming weeks and months helping your families and your own communities through these tough times. To you, I say, good luck. We're here for you. I believe that your four years at Millsaps College have prepared you in a way for the, that your peers may be lacking. You have an arsenal of to tools at your disposal to help you think clearly and critically, evaluate your options in, in an intelligent manner, and make rational yet heartfelt decisions on behalf of your fellow man. And we know you're going to do just that. This is your time and your turn to lead us forward. And all of us at Millsaps are counting on you. Giving the last lecture to a graduating class strikes me as a once in a lifetime opportunity. So please allow me to pontificate for a few minutes and offer you some advice as you leave us uh, for whatever lies ahead. Now, please remember one thing. You can choose to take free, this free advice or leave it. Pick and choose what works for you and what doesn't. Email me or call me later and tell me if all of this sounds asinine to you if you choose to do so. I won't be offended. Do whatever you want, but since you voted for me to do this, I don't want to let you down. Without further delay, and then hence, henceforth letting you graduate, I present you with Schrader's rules, some of which you've likely heard variations of during my classroom bloviating sessions. With that said, some of you have heard me say over the years how I have pretty much done the exact opposite of what everyone has ever told me to do I turned out all right. So I understand if you choose to ignore any or all of this advice, but I think I'll offer it anyway. Ultimately, some of these things are items that I have, you know, I've always tried to do or been cognizant of, but a few of them are things that college senior Nathan Schrader wished he would have known back then. Schrader's rule number one, get back up. Today, May the 8th, happens to be the 136th birthday of my hero, Harry Truman. Harry Truman was president of the United States almost by accident. He wasn't supposed to be the vice president. It was a last minute decision bargained with the Democratic Convention to put him on the ticket to replace the sitting vice president. Several months into his first term as vice president, this mild mannered Midwesterner from Independence, Missouri got a phone call to come to the White House. He was told the president was dead and best of luck to you. And he was now in charge of winding down the Second World War, bringing, bringing peace and getting America situated for the post-war economy. Harry Truman is the, I have him here as our uh, example of the get back up story because Harry Truman was frequently counted out all throughout his career. But in 1948, he ran for re-election when he was immensely unpopular. He was favored to lose and lose in a landslide at times. But Harry Truman embarked on, a multi, on thousands of miles of whistle-stop campaigning via train, which they did at the time, using his grit and his determination to get back up, fight, and try the, his best to win. There are two books, if you're interested in this, The Last Campaign and The Upset That Wasn't that detail this. However, on this day of Truman's 136th birthday and the day before your graduation, he is a great example for you of the moral of this story is to get up, keep pushing, get up and go. He, never, he, he was left behind and left for dead and was reelected successfully. Schrader's rules number two, dance with who brung you. What this means to me is remember where you came from. Remember what you've learned along the way. Be there for your family, your friends, and your Millsaps community, and your Millsaps family. Remember the values you learn from your parents, from your communities, from your family, and from your school. Be true to those values and remember those people who helped you along the way and try to return the favor of what they did to help you by doing so to help someone else who is in the position you were once in when you were younger. Schrader's rules number three. It's time, guys, it's time that time in your life to become a Red Sox fan. Now that you have a college degree in hand, you must know that you occupy a special place in learned society. You will be in good company. 
It's also the perfect time to recall the words of John Cheever. All literary men are Red Sox fans. To be a Yankees fan in literate society is to endanger your life. For those who have been in my classes, you should know this by now. But I thought the rest of you who I never have uh, seen in my own classroom, if you take away one thing from this, maybe this will be the one. Schrader's rules number four, know your limits. Pictured here, uh, for those of you who don't know him, is Clint Eastwood playing the role of Harry Callahan in the film Magnum Force the movie that I first saw when I was in college, and there was a quote that he said in the movie that has always stuck with me. A good man knows his limitations, and we can, of course, amend that. I mean, a good person knows their limitations in the sense that they know what they can take on and how much they can carry at one time. The moral of the story here in Schrader's Rules Number 4 is that you are allowed to say no. You can't do everything for everyone all the time. And so it's important that you take care of yourself, phys your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, that there's nothing wrong with knowing your limits. And don't let yourself get stretched too thin because the work that you're going to be doing and the things that you're going to do throughout your life require you to be able and ready physically and mentally and emotionally. So take a word from Harry Callahan and know your limitations. And I want to give you one last rule. And this is the most important of all rules. And, and the photograph that you see on the screen here is uh, me from the year after I graduated from college. This was me on the campaign trail in Pennsylvania, rural Pennsylvania, in which we were flying from one county to the next in that tiny little plane with three seats in it to make it from one campaign event to the next. And the, the, aside from the pilot, who I can't remember his name, I'm pictured here with my mentor, Catherine Baker Knoll, the, the late Catherine Baker Knoll. When I was in high school and first getting involved in politics, I had the good fortune of meeting Ms. Knoll. She had been the former state treasurer of Pennsylvania for eight years and had a long record of working very hard on behalf of college students for loan support for college loan programs, for senior citizens to keep them in their homes, and for working class people. Catherine and I met when I was working on a campaign in, the, in high school and got to know each other quite well. I was fortunate enough for her to take me under her wing. She was one of the most trusted public servants in the history of the state. In the year 2000, when I was, in co when I was a sophomore in college, I worked on her unsuccessful uh, comeback campaign for state treasurer. We lost, very narrowly. But two years later, in the wake of September 11, 2001, Ms. Knoll, now in her early 70s, came, came to me and said, Nathan, I've learned the lesson from September 11th. Everyone who has something to give back to their country has to, and I still think I have more to give. And so we put together a campaign team comprised of many young people around the state and people who wanted to make a difference, and she was our vehicle to do that. And here's why I'm telling you about her, because first of all, she embodies Lesson one, get back up. Despite a defeat, she bounced back. We won a statewide election, to, and she became the first woman ever elected lieutenant governor of the state of Pennsylvania. After working on her campaign and graduating from college, I became a member of her staff as her legislative aide and deputy communications director. And she went on to teach me everything she knew about government and politics. And to some degree, I owe what I'm doing now to her. But there's something I want to share with you about her. When she had this way of taking on younger staff people to get them ready for their own careers in politics, government, and public service. And when we would be with her in meetings and things, when we would say, things, you know, boss, why are you doing this? Or what led you to do this uh, and not that? She would always quote Shakespeare's Hamlet. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Her story to us, her, her uh, wisdom to us over and over again was to be true to yourself. And I think if you can manage to do that, you will be very well off in what lies ahead for you too. So class of 2020, you've all sat through enough of my lectures and discussions and 
and, and everything else you've attended with me, including Blues Brothers screenings uh, and, and anything else that we've done together over the past couple of years. So let me wind down. First of all, thank you for indulging me, Class of 2020. It's been a high honor to teach you, to get to know you, and to have the privilege of offering these remarks as you graduate in this very unusual year, in this very unusual time. In conclusion, I'm not going to quote any more political philosophers or anyone of that nature, but I am going to quote one of the great contemporary social philosophers, Mr. Spock from Star Trek. I think I speak for all of my colleagues here at Millsaps College when quoting Spock that I say, and paraphrasing Spock, we have been and always shall be your friends. Thank you very much for watching and listening. You will be missed yet fondly remembered. May the road rise to meet you, class of 2020. Thank you.